get started. I'm James Greenhouse. Uh, I'm principal engineer at ARM, and I'm engineering manager for our compiler performance team. Um, I'm interested in making sure that software that runs on ARM, particularly C and C++ software, runs as fast as possible. Uh, our team goes after that by looking for where we can add the most value to the open source ecosystems, uh, and where possible, add a little bit of extra value through ARM's proprietary tool chains, so ARM compiler. For those of you who've interacted with the toolchain team uh, in recent years, We've had a slight reorganization internally. Joey is still the right person to talk to about any kind of toolchain issues, uh, but I'm now looking after compiler performance across all the toolchains. So the team that we have uh, comes from a background of C and C++ compilers. So we have experienced GCC and LVM engineers. Um, through our, our work at ARM, we're experts on ARM's microarchitecture, and we're influencers into ARM's microarchitecture. And we have to become performance analysts as well. So we're primarily interested in benchmark performance, so spec for the big systems, um, you know, servers uh, and uh, HPC systems, and embedded benchmarks for microcontrollers. We're also interested in improving library performance. I have some more to talk about later in the presentation. But these are things like the glibc memory um, string routines, so memcopy, uh, but also floating point math routines. So um, some of our most impactful work over recent years has been on POWF, XBF, LOGF in glibc. We're good at working with high-level compiler transforms. Um, these are things like loop distribution in GCC, or loop on rolling in LLVM, um, kind of big, impactful optimizations. And we're reasonably good at working in open source communities. So I'm an ARC64 maintainer for GCC. We also have people in our team who are uh, ARM maintainers or who are code owners within LLVM. It's a good point in the presentation to ask why you should care about what my team's doing um, and why we should be talking to the community. So our goal as a team is to make C and C++ software on ARM go as fast as possible. We do that by looking at benchmark code, but we're also interested in where we can have an impact on real-world workloads. One key thing that I want to get out of presenting today at Lenaro Connect um, is to make sure that we're very clear and open about what we're going to be working on over the next year, because there are not so many toolchain engineers in the world, and there are not so many toolchain engineers working on ARM and ARCH64. So removing duplication and making sure that we're all focused on, on the right kind of thing for uh, the ARM ecosystem is really important to me because it, it makes sure that we're getting the best value out of a very small number of people who care about toolchains. I don't know if you've seen, we had a, a whole kernel day yesterday. There are like tons of kernel engineers, whereas Toolchain Working Group is maybe eight people sitting around in the smallest room furthest away from Lenaro Connect. So we've got to get everyone working in the right direction. So the team that I uh, lead work along three different strands. Um, for GCC, GCC is the most important compiler for Linux. And so whenever we're looking at infrastructure and servers, we're looking at GCC performance. And there, the benchmark that's important is spec 2017. For LLVM, we split across two strands. LLVM is important for embedded devices, uh, primarily for ARM because it's the base for our commercial software, um, but also in a growing sense uh, in the community, people are moving towards LLVM and are interested in LLVM code size and performance. So there we help by enabling new M-profile architectures and by ensuring that we support the Cortex-M microarchitectures, things like Cortex-M3 and M4 and M33. We also look at LVM for client devices. So client devices to ARM are things like your uh, Android or Chrome OS. And there, where we think we can add additional value is by optimizing implementations of the intrinsics, the neon intrinsics. Um, so here we're looking not so much at benchmarks, which we know well, but at real-world code 
for example, libjpeg from Chromium. And exactly how much performance we can get out of that, I'm not sure. But we want to make sure that where people have written optimized Neon Intrinsics code, it's performing as well as possible so that Neon Intrinsics stay competitive against writing inline assembly. So I'm going to start by talking about spec uh, and spec for GCC. Spec has been a part of my life the entire time that I've worked on toolchains at ARM. Starting out as a graduate at ARM when we were looking at Spec 2000, bringing up the first version of ARCH64. So here we were on simulators, we were looking at dynamic instruction count, and the, our optimization strategy for Spec 2000 was to look at how we could improve the architectural performance. So we were looking at things like adding new instructions, checking the register allocator uh, to make sure that it was doing the right thing for ARH64. Our optimization strategy was to look for small improvements that were going to be broadly applicable across the entire code base. As we started to get hardware, um, as we had Cortex-A57 servers available uh, and moved up to much larger systems that we could run on, we started looking at spec 2006. And we changed our strategy. By that point, we had broadly ARH64 looking quite good. For spec 2006, we were looking at where we were furthest behind against the competition um, in the kind of largest and most impactful ways. So this drove our work on glibc. We were looking at how to get more performance out of the glibc math routines. And this was awesome. So spec 2006, if you compare the version of GCC that first came for ARH64, GCC 4.8, versus what our current trunk scores for spec 2006 floating point, we're 30% higher performance now than we were with the first generation compiler. That's over seven years of work. And that's kind of like getting a whole new generation of CPU for free from your compiler and library optimization. So our strategy here is to look for still kind of broad, but narrowly focused, high impact, benchmark specific um, optimizations. As we move to spec 2017, now that we're getting through all of these kind of uh, broader optimizations, we're looking at what we can do for the benchmark itself. And so there's a term, heroic optimizations. And I don't know who coined that term. I've seen it at other compiler developer meetings. And what these refer to are optimizations in which the compiler has to pull analysis from here and uh, understand LTO and do some escape um, pointer escape analysis and maybe add something else in. And if all the stars align and all the bits of uh, analysis pull together, it can do a little transformation that improves performance by 2x. And so for spec 2017 this year, that's what we're looking at in GCC, how we can pull up to two times performance out of some of the benchmarks um, as a result of really going beyond the kind of analysis we would normally do. And that's because we have an uncomfortable truth in the ARM ecosystem, which is that our compiler technology is not as advanced as some other architectures. What I mean by that, um, and by the way, you don't get to be principal engineer at ARM while giving away what these competitors are and talking down our technology, so I've got to be quite careful. Um, what I mean is that there exist architectures out there with proprietary compilers that do a really great job of improving the uh, memory utilization of the, um, of the systems on which they're running on that do a really awesome job of making better use of the vector units of those systems, of making better use of the execution resources of those large systems. And where I want to get to, really, is that my team shouldn't have a job. The ARM ecosystem should be competing on microarchitectures. Neoverse N1, I have access to the Neoverse uh, N1 SDP cores. Neoverse N1 is a really great design. And I want to make sure that when other people see Neoverse N1, they see it in the best possible light. And that means we have to get our compiler technology uh, up to where some of our competitors are. We want to do this in GCC. Uh, a lot of other architectures try to do this with a proprietary compiler. 
I want to do this in GCC because we know that it's the most important open source toolchain for the Linux ecosystem. I would stretch and say maybe there's a trickle-down effect. So some of our work on spec 2006, certainly um, the improvements we saw in benchmarks feed out into the wider world. We were working on math routines that were, that were going to give a big impact uh, all over the place. But being realistic, I don't think we'll see that kind of thing out of the work that we're doing this year. But we should do it in GCC, because if we are going to see a trickle-down effect, doing it in the most important compiler for Linux is how we get the biggest impact. And we'd love to do this with the support of the community. Um, in Montreal last week, we presented these plans to the GCC community. And it was really encouraging to see not only our partners standing up and saying that they supported this plan um, and how we intended to get performance out of spec, but also see uh, other architectures and distributions stand up and support what we want to do to make GCC the best spec compiler um, for ARM on Linux. One great way that we've collaborated in the past, I don't want to steal Joey's thunder because Joey's got a presentation tomorrow on optimized routines. We've used optimized routines as a way of taking math routines that we're writing for glibc and putting them into a form uh, with a liberal enough license that other people in the ecosystem can pick them up and put them into projects that we didn't expect. Um, so the great example here is the math routines work that I, uh, I keep referring to. We wrote an optimized version of PowF. It speeds up by between 2 and 4x the performance of PowF on glibc. We made it available through optimized routines under uh, a BSD license, I think. And we did that so that it could be picked up by other ecosystems. And it was. It was picked up by Bionic. So we were able to improve Android. It was picked up by ARM compiler for HPC. So it found its way into um, the HPC environment. It was picked up by ARM's embedded toolchain. The optimized routines project, which uh, again, attend Joey's talk for more um, information. The optimized routines project lets us better share the library optimization work um, that we're pulling out. And that's good for the entire ecosystem. I, I knew it was one of the two. <laughs> It, you're right. Um, briefly, this is the kind of work that we've been doing on spec over the last couple of years. Uh, so these are not heroic optimizations. They're just pretty good. And when I, mean, when I say pretty good, I mean like 20, 30% on the benchmarks that they matter for. Um, things like idiom recognition, which is looking through the source code and finding whether some jumble of bit operations actually maps to something that we understand like a pop count, um, looking at whether you know, it loops like a floating point min or max operation and whether we can put out those instructions rather than a, a longer chain of things. These are kind of pretty good in spec benchmarks where you have tight loops. The high level loop transforms, um, loop interchange and loop distribution were both very good for our spec 2006 and 2017 scores. Uh, and we've also been looking at vectorization improvements. This is more of a kind of flavor of the kind of work that we do, um, rather than something I want to go into too much detail on. Where we have to go next with spec is towards these kind of more heroic optimizations. So our three key workloads that we want to target, and we found these by looking at uh, where we were against competitive architectures. Um, MCF is all about memory layout optimizations. The, the optimization is called um, array of structs or uh, structure peeling. Basically, what you want to do is uh, run through and look for where the programmer is trying to access things that are spread out in memory and pull them together so that your prefetcher is going to do a good job of them. Um, that requires all sorts of analysis to decide whether it's safe to do that rewrite. So it needs to be an LTO. Um, X264 is about auto vectorization again and making better use of the vector hardware that we have. Uh, Neoverse N1 has huge improvements in vector throughput when compared to previous generation ARM products and um, making good use of that new hardware that we have is very important for our, our spec score. 
And then exchange two is about uh, inlining and Fortran library optimization. We're trying to do all of this in the open. We've written a report as to where we think this performance is going to come from. Um, and we've put that, we're starting to put that up on the GCC wiki after talking to the, the community about it last week. These are different from what we've done in the past because these optimizations are closer to heroic. They're less general purpose. They're less likely to improve um, the, the broader Linux ecosystem. And they require a lot of compiler effort to get right. I want to move on for the second half of my talk onto what we're doing for LVM performance. So I preempt a question at the end as to whether we're moving towards LVM as a, as a company. LVM is important in certain segments for ARM. GCC is important for infrastructure and server and networking. LVM for us is a foundational technology for ARM compiler. Both the HPC ARM compiler and the embedded ARM compiler are built on top of LLVM. It's also the base toolchain for Android. The Android ecosystem has entirely moved to LLVM. And we're seeing movement towards using LLVM in open source embedded toolchains. Though we're not there yet, and um, again, Joey's talk this morning presented on our plans for what we're uh, distributing as, a, as an open source embedded toolchain from ARM, and that's still GCC. So we need to care about LVM uh, from code size and performance perspective as it becomes a more and more important toolchain for us. What we've been working on this year are the ARM M profile vector extensions. So these bring vector instructions, kind of neon-like vector instructions to the M profile. Um, they give kind of big performance opportunities for DSP algorithms and for machine learning algorithms onto the Cortex-M architecture. They have support for 16-bit floating point. Uh, and the way that we target them as a compiler, um, much like Neon, is through primarily auto-vectorization, backed up with intrinsic support for people who want to write the algorithms with a little more control. They bring gather, load, and scatter store support, which is good for enabling even more auto-vectorization. They have tail loop predication, which is a, an optimization uh, to allow you to avoid a scalar tail. So this is a good code size optimization. And they have low overhead loop instructions, which are a, a performance enhancement. So we've spent our year implementing support for this uh, in the open source LLVM compiler. Um, and what we are, so I'll give an example of a low overhead loop because it's one of the cool parts of the architecture. Low overhead loops, um, what you are looking at here is a loop structure with WLS which is kind of a, the loop is about to start, and it primes the processor. And then LE is used instead of your previous branch instruction. And once you've primed the processor to understand that LE is going to be there, each time through the loop, it doesn't actually have to execute that instruction. So you can save yourself a cycle and uh, the, the bubble from the branch. Um, the reason I wanted to call out low overhead loops and how they work is that we put a lot of effort into the, the pass for this which was good because it brought us into the LLVM community and allowed us to solve a, a common problem. So there are a lot of uh, DSP-style architectures that have a low overhead loops instruction, a lot like this. Previously, they were all keeping their code downstream. By bringing the pass out and talking about it as ARM and in the open, we were able to get a generic framework in place and get people to start moving towards um, our view of how low overhead loops should be handled. So this, for us, was kind of a, a good step into being better community citizens in LVM and making sure that we're doing things in a more generic way. I said at the start, we care about real-world mobile applications. So we're looking as a team now at what we should be doing um, to better enable the Android ecosystem, um, primarily through what we can do for a code base like Chromium which is large and spread out, and where the compiler probably can't have a huge impact outside of key performance routines. So this is why our strategy for something like Chromium is to look at where we can uh, add value through optimizing intrinsics. 
we also care about embedded performance and code size. We have an upstream first strategy. We try to take as much of our performance work upstream for LLVM as we can. Um, ARM compiler keeps back things like new architecture and um, microarchitectures, uh, support for microarchitectures that haven't yet been publicly announced. What I was hoping uh, would happen from this presentation um, is that I would be able to present to the room what we're thinking of as a compiler performance team at ARM. And if it sounds kind of interesting, it would be great to have your support on some of these in the upstream communities. Particularly the heroic optimization, optimizations in GCC are outside of our comfort zone for what we normally do in the compiler. And because they're very specific to the, the benchmark, it's quite likely that the community will um, push back a little bit because maybe this code isn't necessarily the best for the GCC project. What would be helpful for us at ARM is if the community feels that these are helpful optimizations and they are things that um, the community wants to see, it would be great to have your support. Uh, if you'd like to help on any of the kind of things that um, we're working on, please email me, or if you're more used to contacting through Joey, keep uh, contacting Joey. Um, if you want information on the kind of work that Lenaro's doing, uh, they're optimizing SVE performance for GCC. They've been looking at code size for LLVM. Um, it's best to talk to Maxim uh, and talk to the Toolchain Working Group. Peter gave a great presentation this morning on code size optimizations and the, the kind of thing that we can expect from the, the outliner and um, a bunch of stuff that the Toolchain Working Group have been working on. Um, what I really want to see is hardware and software for the ARM ecosystem go faster and faster. And it would be great if, as a community, we can collaborate to make that happen. Does anyone have questions? Yeah. Um, so in your list of important things for the LLVM ecosystem, uh, one of the things that seemed like it was missing was uh, AI and the tie-ins to things like TVM or Glow, uh, being able to generate you know, code. And when you look at areas that are competitive against other architectures, that would seem like one area ARM might want to focus on. Yeah, so we haven't looked at AI within my team. There are other groups within ARM that are interested in looking at where open source um, compiler technology is going. I think probably we're uh, not at the point where we would take a bet on which was going to win. So a lot of the kind of um, stuff you would do for TVM is maybe a little bit higher level than what we're what we're used to. We're kind of more about the C and C++ code generation. Correct, but I'm hardware. thinking about the LLVM back end of that, right? So TVM uses LLVM, Glow uses LLVM in order to do the, the code generation, and it's the code generation part of that that I'm talking about. Right, so uh, other languages that do a kind of similar thing are um, Halide, uh, there are people with um, compilers that take you from C Sharp down to something that LLVM understands. And each of these technologies is going to create a kind of slightly different form of LLVM IR. Um, picking one of those and running with it and trying to see, is there something about the IR that's coming out of TVM that's particularly interesting or unique or differentiates it from uh, what you would expect from a C or C++ program is possibly interesting. But I don't think we're at that point where we know which technology to follow yet. Okay, LLV in, in my team. Sure, um, yeah. the MLIR stuff then may be interesting, is that might move into the TVM project. Right, so you, uh, so in AI you have MLIR, you have TVM, you have the Facebook um, relay. 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 Um, and all of these are gonna create slightly different LVMIR, and uh, I don't know which one we should be looking at right now. All right, if no other questions, thanks for your time.